welcome. Thank you so much for watching. I pray that you be blessed by this series on overcoming the Antichrist. Divine strategies for overcoming the Antichrist. Because the Antichrist is alive and well today. He's on the world scene, world stage right now. He's, um, he's welcome. Welcome. Thank you for watching. I pray that you be blessed and highly favored of God. I'm having a special series on how to overcome the Antichrist, the false prophet, the new world order, the great tribulation. This is a series that you really need to listen to because you don't want to be like the foolish Five virgins that were foolish, they didn't make it. They knew the king was coming, the bridegroom was coming, but they did not prepare. They were not ready. So when the bridegroom came, they were left behind. I don't want you to be left behind. I want you to understand the mysteries of the kingdom and how to overcome, because we are already living in the last days. The signs of the times are everywhere. More so now with the ever-increasing conflict between Russia and the West, uh, the, 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 the potential of it going global and nuclear is there. These are the signs of the end of time. The Lord Jesus coming back. And I want to prepare you for your glorious homecoming to be the five wise virgins. How do you become that? How do we live in such a way that we will be welcomed into the kingdom of God? Not only survive the great tribulation, but to have great, great jubilation in the tribulation. To really experience the fullness of God, the manifest of the sons of God in the end of time, to be the people that God is chosen for such a time as this. And to demonstrate to this generation the greatness of our God. Because he wants to be known. He desires that all men might be saved. How are they going to be saved? They're going to be saved through your life. The testimony of your life. Not the words of your life, but the testimony of your life. They are watching you. Are they seeing the glory of God on you? The joy of the Lord in you. The peace of God in you. Because it's not what you say, it's what you do. The world is watching to see whether you are the happiest person on the face of the earth, in the midst of the storm. Crisis times that are before us. Everything that's shakeable is being shaken. Jesus said in these last days, nations will rise against nation. Kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines. There will be earthquakes. Pandemics. The believers will be handed to be beheaded. Many of the saints will be beheaded for their faith. Can you live through that victorious and triumphant in the face of the enemy? Will there be a people that will survive the great tribulation? The answer is yes. There will be a great multitude of people that are going to be victorious and triumphant, that the devil won't have power, the Antichrist won't have power over. They are not going to survive, but they're going to thrive during that time. I want you to be one of those people. I want to give you the secrets of living a victorious life, a victorious life in the midst of the storm. Because God has something more for you. You were created for greatness. Created to walk in kingdom authority. You have an appointment with destiny. You have been brought in the kingdom at a glorious time. The time of visitation. The time of the restoration of all things. These are the best of times. Indeed, the worst of times. For those who are lukewarm, double-minded. For those who do not know who they are in Christ and what they can do through Christ. They are caught up in the fears 
of what's coming. The coming financial collapse. The depression that's coming. They're watching things in Washington, in New York, in Moscow, in Beijing, in the Middle East. And they're fearful of what's coming. There is nothing to fear. I'm going to show you from scripture in this series divine strategies for overcoming the Antichrist is the title of my series. And today I'm going to share on kingdom lifestyle. How to live like a king, think like a king, act like a king because you're a king's kid. Born into the family of God. You're a brother of Jesus, the king of kings. And he has made you kings and priests unto him. Not after the rapture. You're a king right now. Appointed right now. Angels on assignment, a bodyguard. You are in the world as a representative of heaven. An ambassador of heaven. With diplomatic immunity. Because God who called you has a plan and a purpose for your life to impact this generation, to transform this generation, to inform this generation, to be a paradigm in this generation. God chose you for such a time as this. And now he's speaking to you through me. I'm a messenger. I'm a voice crying out in the wilderness of nations to prepare a people for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I want to equip you to live victoriously, triumphantly in these last days. Because they will be a victorious people. They will be a manifestation of the sons of God on the earth in these last days. And I'm inviting you to be part of that group of overcomers that Daniel spoke about. Those that know their God who do exploits. Daniel chapter 11, 32 to 35. God has called you to be part of the people that are going to show forth his glory, do exploits on the earth. Not by might, not by power, but by the spirit of the living God. I want you to come into alignment with the heart of God. I want you to come into alignment with the purposes of God. I want you to come into an awareness of who you are in Christ Jesus and what you can do through Christ Jesus. Because you are born into the royal family of the king of kings and the lord of lords. You are not another human being. You've been begotten by God. Born again. Born to be like Jesus. Born to spend an eternity with God. Born to overcome the antichrist, the false prophet. And the ten kings. And the new world order. And the great tribulation. God has big things for you. Because this is an hour of crisis. And he wants to show his power through you. There will be a victorious people. There will be a triumphant church. The overcomers will be manifested in this hour. And I am inviting you to know how to become one. How to participate in the destiny that God has prepared for you. How not to be an observer, but a participant in the end game on God's side. Because God needs you. He has placed you in the sphere of influence that you're in for such a time as this. That is why you need to understand what God is doing. He wants you to come into a place of revelation of your identity as a king's kid. Because kings don't think like commoners. Think, kings think like kings. Kings act like kings. Kings have power, have dominion, have authority. That's what God wants you to know. Because my people perish for lack of knowledge. Because they don't know who they are. And they don't know whose they are. They don't know their identity. And they don't know their destiny. And they don't know 
what God has done for them already, that they do the done. Everything that God's called you to do has already been paid for. Or everything that God wants you to do has already been done. Done. We do the done. Because God is in us to will and to do the done. It's finished. Jesus said it is finished. The battle is finished. The victory is won. We walk in that victory. We think of, not on the circumstances we're in. The world will continue to go from bad to worse. But we are going to go the opposite direction from glory to glory to glory. We're going to be moving in power, in majesty, in demonstration of the greatness of our God. This is the greatest hour to demonstrate the power of God. But you've got to understand what God is doing. We know what the devil is doing. We see what God is, the devil is doing. Many of God's people are scared. Because scary things are going on. Nuclear holocaust. Global pandemic. Global lockdowns. All this is here and now. Worse than what we have seen. It's here and now. It's happening. It's, you, you can feel it. It's coming. Should, should you get excited? Should you run and hide? What should you do? I got a news for you of what you can do that God has already prepared for you. We do everything that God has already preordained because what he preordained, he executes in us and through us. He is the author and the finisher. What is it that God wants you to do in, this, in these last days? In the book of Luke chapter 12, verse 32, these are the words of Jesus. The words of Jesus to you right now. Fear not, little flock. For it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Fear not. Don't be caught up in the fears, the anxieties, the disappointment, the frustrations of what's going on in our world today. The finger pointing, that is not for you because this world is not your home. You are not a citizen of America. You are not a citizen of Great Britain. You are not a citizen of, of Ukraine, of Russia, of Moscow, of Beijing. You are not a citizen of Africa. Not a citizen of Australia. You are a citizen of the kingdom of God. You are in the world but not of the world. So don't be caught up in worldly affairs, in the accusation, condemnation, bitterness, and anger. Let the world go. This is not your home. You have a home in heaven. This is not your king. You have a king in heaven. So don't be caught up in the, in the deception of Satan, in the manipulation of Satan. We're living in an age of deception, manipulation, Controlling spirits, lying spirits. It is time for you to know you have an identity. And that identity is given to you. Your ID, who you are, is given in scripture. What did Jesus say? Fear not, little flock. It is my father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. That means you're born to walk with God. You're born again to be a king and a priest unto God. It is the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. He wants you to think about the kingdom. He wants to, you to walk like a king's kid. He wants you to think like a king's kid. He wants you to act like a king's kid because you are the son of the king. Everything belongs to you. I'm talking about everything belongs to you. You are in Christ and he has given you all things pertaining to life and godliness. He has given you all things and you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. You are what God says you are. The apple of his eye, the object of his love. And he has made you a king and a priest because it is his good pleasure to lift you up, to exalt you, to make you a king, to sit together with Christ in heavenly places. It's no longer you who lives, but Christ lives in you. And you are seated with Christ in heavenly places. Far above 
the principalities and powers and rulers of darkness, far above the pandemics, the war, the warmongering, the nuclear holocaust, the pandemics, the financial collapse. You are above that. You are not controlled by that. You are not held back by that because you are a king born from above, born in the royal family of Jesus Christ. And the Father delights to give you the kingdom. The kingdom is not coming. You are already a king. You have already been appointed. You have already been anointed king in Christ Jesus. When Jesus said it is finished, the battle was finished, the war was over. You have been brought back to your father. Like the prodigal son, you come back. The father has received you and the father has restored you the ring of authority. He has given you the scepter. He has given you the throne. You are seated with Christ in heavenly places. You got to begin to think like a king, to act like a king. Then knowing that kings make decrees, you are to decree. You are to cancel the decrees of Satan. You are to cancel the assignments of Satan because greater is he that's in you than he that is in the world. You have been given authority on the earth. You have been given dominion on the earth. The dominion that Adam lost has been restored to you in Christ Jesus. It is the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Begin to think like a king. Begin to act like a king. The king has kingdom resources. Kingdom resources. Unlimited resources. He, kings don't think poor. Th kings have at their disposal the armies to protect them. You have the armies of heaven, angels on assignment, multiplication of food, going invisible on the enemy in these last days. There is coming a people that are coming into the consciousness of their identity in Christ Jesus. I'm talking about a new consciousness of their identity, a new appreciation of their identity, a new exercise of their authority because they know who they are in Christ Jesus. We are an end time people living in a time of crisis, unprecedented in all of human history. We're living in a predicament that precedes the death of Western civilization, the end of the times of the Gentiles. We are the generation of overcomers, not afraid, not intimidated. Not fearful of the enemy. Because we know who we are and we know whose we are. Fear not, little flock. It is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. God has given you the kingdom. You have the authority. You have the dominion. The devil has no authority and dominion over you. He only has authority that you give him. Because God's given you the authority. He has made you to sit with him in heavenly places. You got to think like that. You got to talk like that. You got to act like that because you are what God says you are. And you can do what God says you can do because you're a child of the Most High God. Fear not, little flock. It is my Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. We are talking about kingdom lifestyle, a hallelujah lifestyle because you're too blessed to be stressed with external circumstances. Because you know who you are and whose you are. You are a king. Appointed by God. Anointed by God. Seated with Christ in heavenly places. Ruling and reigning together with him in the now. Heaven is not a future. Heaven is where Jesus is. And Jesus is with you. Heaven is all the way to heaven. You've got to experience the bigness of God in the now. You've got to experience the nowness of God and walk in the nowness of God, abiding in Him, in His presence, because in His presence there's fullness of joy, pleasures forevermore in His presence. You've got to enter into His presence with thanksgiving, with the shouts of victory, with a new paradigm. I'm talking about the old is gone, the old lifestyle. The old way of thinking, the old way of reacting, everything is over. You are in the kingdom. You think kingdom. You talk kingdom. You act kingdom because you are a king. After the order of Melchizedek, the eternal kingdom, the eternal appointment, you are 
a king. God says you're a king. Think like one, act like one, because you are. You have the divine right of kings. Fear not, little flock. It is my father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. If you're a king's kid, you're going to understand something. You need power. Because if you don't have power, you cannot live like a king. Because the enemy will take away all your authority and humiliate you and cast you down because you don't have the power. Kings have power. They have militaries. That's why they're kings. You've got to understand that you have power. You've got to understand the power you have. Because as kings, you cannot act without power. Because kings make decrees and they, they back their decree with power. Do you have power? How can you get power to exercise your kingdom appointment? You've got to have kingdom anointing. The anointing is the power that breaks the yoke of bondage. He is a God of breakthrough. You break through all the limitations of yesterday that has held you back. You break away from the anxieties of yesterday, the fears of yesterday, the failures of yesterday. You break through because you know who you are, that you're a child of God, appointed by God, anointed by God, and you break through, and you break through through the power, the dunamis power. You need power to break through because the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy, and stop you, and block you. You need the power to break through the powers of Satan. Break through sickness and disease and pandemics and financial collapse and super, super inflation that's coming. All these things to be able to wipe, them, to wipe them away from you and begin to press forward from glory to glory. Because your God will manifest in the now, will manifest in the marketplace, will manifest in your family. There is protection for you, divine protection for you, divine provision for you, angels on assignment. You need the power. To be a king, you need power. In the book of Acts chapter 1 verse 8. But you shall receive power. You, listening to me, shall receive power. You need power. The reason why you are where you are, filled with anxiety and fear and discouragement and woundedness and rejection, isolation, confusion, it's because you don't have the power to change the situation. But I'm telling you right now, you can have the power to change every circumstance. You have the power to overcome. You need to embrace that power. You need to receive that power. You need to walk in that power. And that, the scripture says, you shall receive power after the Holy Spirit is come upon you. When do you receive power? When the Holy Spirit is come upon you. You need the anointing. You need God to anoint you. Jesus could not do anything until he was anointed. When David was anointed, he started fighting bears with bare hands. When he was anointed, he started, he started fighting Goliath with five stones and, and a sling. He killed the greatest man. Because of the anointing. You, you go through the whole Bible. You see men, ordinary men, doing extraordinary things by the anointing. You need to come into the anointing. You need to come into the flow of the Holy Spirit. You need to come into the revelation. You need to come into the understanding of your identity in Christ and the position in, your position in Christ and your possession in Christ. What you have in Him and through Him. You need to come into that revelation that understanding so you can do great things because you were created for greatness you've come into the kingdom at such a time a time that demands greatness out of you I call forth that greatness to come forth it is the father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom he has given you diplomatic immunity because you are an ambassador on the earth you are in the world but not of the world you are an ambassador, a representative of heaven. Is, as a representative of heaven, heaven is behind you. You've got to believe to receive. You have to walk in the consciousness of your identity. You have to embrace your identity and you have to embrace 
the kingdom that God has given you. And begin to think like a king. And begin to act like a king. Because kings have authority. You begin to exercise the authority of God. And make royal decrees. Because of who you are. And whose you are. Because you are appointed by the ancient of days. The holy one of Israel. You are a king after the order of Melchizedek. The eternal kingdom. You shall receive power. When the Holy Spirit has come upon you. You say how do I receive the Holy Spirit? You fall on your knees and you cry out to God. Fill me with the Holy Spirit. If there is any sin in me, expose it, reveal it to me. I want it gone. I want to confess every sin I've ever committed. I want you to cleanse me with the blood of Jesus and fill me with the Holy Spirit. You have to want to be filled with the Holy Spirit. You have to want to be cleansed by the blood of Jesus. You have to want to be what God has called you to be, a king and a priest unto God, an ambassador in this world in the end of days. You shall receive power when the Holy Ghost has come upon you. In 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, For God has not given us, has not given us, that means you and me have not given us. You Listen to me. Listen to what the Holy Spirit is saying to you right now in the book of Timothy. God has not given us the spirit of fear, fear of the New world order, fear of the great tribulation, fear of failure, fear of running out of food, running out of, 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 of finances, running out of every, everything. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power. Dunamis power. Eternal power. Infinite power. Unlimited power. Unlimited anointing. Unlimited glory has given us his power. God has not given us the spirit of fear, to live in fear, to live in anxiety because of what's happening right now between Russia and NATO and America, the, the, the Chinese, the Iranians and the Israelis, and the whole place is going to explode, explode into a, a, a nuclear conflict. God has not given us the spirit of fear, fear of the um, nuclear holocaust, fear of the rising up of the Antichrist, the false prophet, and 6-6 six, six, great tribulation. God has not given us the spirit of fear to live in fear, fear of the future, because we know him who holds the future. He lives in us, he walks with us, he is our God, and he loves us. He has made us the apple of his eye, the object of his eternal love. And of God has not given us a spirit of, of fear, but of power and of sound mind. God has given us the spirit of love. We love the unlovable. We reach out to the unlovable. We reach out to those people who reject us, manipulate us, try to destroy us. Because we know we are immortal until our work is over. We know there is no power on earth that can defeat us. Because greater is he that's in us than he that is in the world. No weapon formed against us will prosper. That's why we are not afraid. Because we know who lives in us, who walks with us, who abides in us. We know we've been anointed. And nobody can defeat the anointing within us. Because Jesus was anointed. And we are anointed with the same anointing. And we can walk this earth as Jesus walked this earth. Because we are in the same anointing. These are the days of Elijah. The days of declaration or demonstration. These are the days of the overcomers. These are the days of the five wise virgins. It's a choice that you have to make. Because destiny is not by chance, it's by choice. You have to choose to be who God has made you to be. He chose you to be a king. He says, fear not, little flock. It is my father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. He wants you to have the kingdom. He wants you to walk in that kingdom power, in that kingdom anointing, in that kingdom resources. Too blessed to be stressed. He wants you to walk in the abundance of the kingdom. God delights in the prosperity of his servants. He wants you to prosper. He doesn't want you to be the tail. He wants you to be the head. These blessings, Lord, overtake you. Deuteronomy 28, 
who tell you all the blessings that will come upon you because you are chosen of God. You are anointed by God. You are set apart by God. And you are appointed a king and a priest unto God. That's why you're too blessed to be stressed. The best of your years are before you. You were created for such a time as this. This is the hour. The hour of crisis is the hour that God has set apart for you because when it gets tough, the tough gets going. Now, the real men are standing up. Real women of God are standing up. The time has now come to separate the men from the boys. This is the hour. This is the time. Fear not, little flock. It is my father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of love. We are not looking at our enemies and hating on them. We are not haters. We are lovers. God's made us to love them because he loved us while we were yet sinners. We keep on loving. We keep on forgiving. We keep on reaching out because we love the unlovable. Because God loves the unlovable. Because it's not our love. The love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. He has given us the spirit of power. Dunamis power. To break through. To change things. I'm talking about the old paradigm is being changed. New things are happening. Because we got the power to change things in the name of Jesus. In the authority we have received of God. That's why we can keep on loving, keep on giving, because we know who we are and we know whose we are. And it's not given, it's given us sound mind, not manipulated, contaminated by worldly news, by the propaganda, the lies, the warmongering, the filth. We know the truth and the truth has set us free. We have the mind of Christ that can discern the heart of the Father, the, plans, the purposes of God. We are not caught up in the people pleasing because there is a battle for your mind. Everything that's happening is about capturing your mind, controlling your mind. You have to have the, the mind of Christ by receiving the anointing, by receiving the, uh, the Spirit of God, so that you have the mind of Christ by the impartation of the Holy Spirit. Because you are what you hear. Your mind is influenced by external circumstances. But when you come into the kingdom, you are influenced by the anointing, by the Spirit of God, by the revelation that comes from God. You are not caught up in the stinging thinking. You're prayed up and filled up and walk in revelation thinking. There is an impartation of revelation, understanding, illumination. As you move forward, you move forward in power, in majesty, in glory, because you are called to walk in majesty, because you're a king, anointed for such a time as this. The battle is about the king. The devil wants to be the king over your life. But you have a king, King Jesus, who has chosen you, called you by name, paid with his own blood, reconciled you to God the Father, exalted you to sit together with him in heavenly places. Because of who you are, you have no reason to live in anxiety and in fear and discouragement. You have no reason to be fearful of the end of time. You have no reason to say, well, I don't know what I will do because God knows what you're going to do because he is with you. He is in you. He is through you. You are, you are being led by God himself and you have nothing to fear because God who is leading you knows the way and you are here to just say, thy will be done and not my will. So let the will of God be done because his will, his bill. When you walk in his will, you walk in his abundance. When you walk in his will, you walk in his protect, protection. I want you to know that there is no lack in him. Jesus said, I'm come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. John 10.10. 10. There is abundance of anointing, abundance of joy, abundance of prosperity. 
There is nothing lacking in him. In his presence, there's fullness of joy, pleasures forevermore. I'm talking about kingdom lifestyle, a lifestyle of kings. These are not paupers in the, in the kingdom of God. These are kings. They talk like kings. They act like kings. They live like kings because they are kings anointed, appointed by God. And they are moving in the anointing, in the purposes of God. They are moving by revelation. They are moving because God's on the move. That's why I'm inviting you to, to, to get on board. Get on board. Get on board. It's too beautiful. It's too wonderful. Every day with Jesus gets sweeter than the day before. The day before. It gets more exciting, more wonderful, because it keeps unfolding before you. The will of God, the plan of God unfolds before you. Divine surprises. The things that you didn't plan that God has planned for you. What the eye have not seen, what the ear have not heard, what has not entered the heart of man is what God has prepared for you. Why stay in in misery. Why stay in shallow, in, in the shallow water? Jesus said to the disciples, come out, just sail out and you will have a get great catch. You sail out and cast your, your net on the other side because there is a great catch. There's a great breakthrough for you. These are the days of your breakthrough. The breakthrough you've been waiting for is going to happen now during the worst of times. When everybody's giving up, the sons of God are rising up because the time has come. This is the time of their vindication. This is the time of kingdom people to begin to show kingdom, kingdom resources, kingdom lifestyle, because God is with them. You know what it says? It says, you can call those things that are not as if they were. You can create new realities, new paradigms. You can create a new future by the declarations of your mouth. I'm talking about royal declarations of a king's kid. I'm talking about angels on assignment to accomplish and fulfill your desires. You will send these angels charge over you because you are in Christ, because He has given you the kingdom. It is His good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Ordinary people receiving extraordinary anointing and receiving a kingdom anointing and kingdom appointments. Life in the kingdom of God is exciting. I'm talking about extraordinary, 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 extraordinary lifestyle. Ominous, amazing. What the eye have not seen is about to happen in your life. What you have not heard is about to happen in your life. What has not entered the heart of man is about to happen in your life. It's time you change your thinking because your thinking determines what you do. It is your thinking that's holding you back. You're held back by old thinking, old ways. I'm calling you to throw away the old thinking. Throw away the old paradigm. It's a new day. It's a new walk. This moment, it's a defining moment. Because the future is going to change. The future is going to be exciting. The future is going to be wonderful. Because you're coming into the realization of your identity in Christ. You're coming into the place of realizing that you're a king by divine appointment. You have been given the kingdom. That it is the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. And the kingdom resources. And the kingdom protection. And the kingdom appointments. Every single day. Walking in your kingdom anointing. Divine surprises. Life in the kingdom of God is exciting. Amazing things happen. I always call it the hallelujah lifestyle. Where every day is hallelujah. 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 Because hallelujah. Because we are too blessed to be stressed. We're just too blessed. God blessed us. We're blessed coming in. We're blessed going out. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Ooh, isn't it wonderful? We're blessed with divine health, divine wealth. We, we're just blessed. We, we're just blessed. Everything we touch is blessed. Blessed every way. We just carry the blessings of God. We're carriers of the blessings of God. We, we, we freely give because we're freely received. We, we just keep on giving. We just keep on loving. We just keep on keeping on because we are filled with him, with the dunamis power that raised up Christ from the dead. We walk this earth as kingdom people, 
with a kingdom assignment. You have been chosen for greatness. And I'm calling you to your greatness in this hour of crisis. This generation wants to see the demonstration of the power, the glory, the majesty of the king through your life. They are waiting to see the bigness of God through your life. They are waiting to see the provision of God through your life. They are waiting to see the goodness of God through your life. It is time you take God at his word. Blessed coming in and blessed going out. These blessings will overtake you. Do you believe that? Oh no, not me. Why? Ah, oh, because I'm not so good. Who said you've got to be good? None is good. Only God is good. It is the goodness of the Lord that leads us to repentance. You find favor in the sight of God. He has called you for such a time as this. And he wants to lead you at such, at such a time as this. You have everything going for you if you only believe. All things are possible to those who believe. Are you ready to believe God? And to take him at his word? You say, what if I do that? What will happen? Philippians chapter 4 verse 13. I can do all things. All things means all things. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. I can do all things. I'm a king. I'm anointed. I'm appointed. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can do all things. Can you do all things through Christ? God says you can do all things. There is nothing impossible to those who believe. Do you believe? If you believe, you will see the glory of God. He said, but I don't know what to do. Thou shalt not say in thine heart. Who shall ascend unto heaven? That is to bring down Christ. Or who shall descend into hell? That is to bring up Christ. For the word is nigh thee in thy mouth. The word of God, the promises of God are in your mouth. You confess those promises. You meditate on those promises. You believe those promises. You stand on those promises. You step out on those promises and see the goodness of God. And see the hand of God. And see the power of God. Because so many people are just caught up in the fear of the hour, the crisis of the hour. I'm saying there is much more in this hour. There is a greater anointing in this hour, greater possibilities in this hour. Because this is the hour of vindication. Because this is the hour of showdown. There is a showdown between the kingdom of God and the kingdom of darkness. Now the sons of God are rising up to demonstrate the power of God, to demonstrate the greatness of God, to demonstrate the nowness of God. Is your God bigger than your problems? If he's not bigger than your problems, then you have every reason to be scared, to be anxious, to be mad, to be confused, to be bitter and angry. Because your God is not bigger. He can't do nothing for you. You're all alone. Come and join me in the celebration of the resurrection. Because he lives, we live also. We live in victory. We live in joy. We live in power. We live in glory because we know who we are. We know who is with, with, with us. He's in us to will and to do of his good pleasure. The king of kings is with us and has made us kings with him. This is why this life over this side of heaven is heaven all the way to heaven. Because he said, I'll come and abide in you. He said, I'll not leave you nor forsake you. I'll always be with you because he's with us. We are not living in anxiety. We're not living in fear. We don't want to, well, people say, well, Robert, I, I really want to like you, but I don't like you because you're saying we're going through the great tribulation. I can't stand it. I'm scared. Why are you scared? Oh, oh, oh I don't know. I want, I, want it to, 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 I want to rapture out and go out because the devil is too big for my God. He's, I'm scared. I don't know the God that's scared of the devil. He created the devil. I'm not scared of the Antichrist. God created the Antichrist. And he is my father. And he walks with me. And he talks with me. And I live with him. And I walk with him. And I'm not scared. Bring it on. Because God is with me. God is for me. If God be for me, who can be against me? That's how good it is. I'm telling you, child of God, it is time you throw away your stinging thinking. Come into revelation thinking. You are what God says you are. You can do what God says you can do. Because you are called for such a time as this, it's time for you to, to begin to think differently. The paradigm is to change. The way you think has to change. The way you act has to change. Your expectations have to change. Everything has to change. 
You have to bring yourself into alignment with the revelation of your identity in Christ. Because you are a king born to rule and to reign together with Christ. Every demon, every principality, every power of darkness has been defeated. There is not a power on earth that can defeat you because greater is he that's in you than he that is in the world. It's the reason why you should re rejoice. This is the reason why you are not scared. Oh, well, have you heard of the new pandemics that are coming? Have you heard of, of what's going to happen in this war? It's, get, it's getting worse. It, it, anything can happen anytime. Let it happen. It's all predicted. God says it will happen. Nations against nation. Kingdom against kingdom. Rumors of wars. and It's all happening. End time signs of the end. Not signs of the end of the people of God, but the rising of the people of God. The standing up of the people of God. The declarations of the people of God. Because we are here to stand up and speak out. We are here to declare that our God reigns. He is the king. And he has made us kings and priests unto him. Mark chapter 9 verse 23. Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe all things, are possible. All things are possible. You hear me? You're listening to me? God has you listening to this message. As I come to the close of this message, I'm bringing you to a place of transformation, of receiving your identity and your destiny. You're a king born to rule and reign. The dominion that Adam lost to the devil has been restored in Christ Jesus. And Christ is in you to will and to do of his good pleasure. Jesus said, if thou canst believe, all things are possible. All things are possible right now. All things are possible right now. I said all things are possible right now. There is no limitation to the possibilities. There is nothing that limits you from being Rich and prosperous, all your debts paid, your house paid, everything done. There is no limit except the limit you put upon yourself. God says all things means all things are possible to them that believe. All things means all things. God said all things if you believe that all things are possible and begin to stand on the promise of God and begin to believe his word and begin to declare his word and begin to, to walk according to it is written, then you begin to walk in the power, the majesty, the glory that God has already given you. We do the done. It's already done. You have the power. You have the anointing. You have the kingdom. You have the resources of the kingdom. Everything's at your disposal. Angels on assignment. You're created to be the head and not the tail. You're not created to be a beggar and a loser. You're created to stand up and walk in, in power. You are a king. Talk like a king. Act like a king. Live like a king. Because you are a king. God said it. If you believe it, you become what God says. If you doubt, you go without. What do you want? Life is wonderful. Life is glorious. We live in a glorious time. Yes, the war is coming. Yes, the new pandemics are coming. Yes, new lockdowns are coming. Yes, all these things are coming. But we have nothing to be afraid of because we're going to break through. We're going to go through because our God is a God of breakthrough. We are breaking through. We will do what God told us to do. We will finish what God told us to do. We will do only what he tells us, not what man tells us. We are the sons of the Most High God because we are kings. We don't have to listen to anybody, do what anybody tells us because we are kings. We are appointed. We are anointed. We are seated with Christ in heavenly places. Far above all principalities and powers and rulers of darkness. And the devil and the antichrist are subject to us. Blessed be the name of the Lord God. I want you to rejoice in, this day, in these days. I want you to tell that old devil, bring it on. I know who I am. I am armed with the anointing. I'm armed with it is written. If Jesus overcame the devil by it is written, I'm overcoming you by it is written. I stand on it is written. It is written. It is the Father's good pleasure to give me the kingdom. It is written. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. It is written. God has not given me the spirit of, uh, the spirit of fear, but of 
power and of a sound mind. So I'm not going to be beholding you to a devil. You can't touch me because God has given me the anointing. The anointing is inside of me. It's given me the spirit of power, of love, and a sound mind. The mind of Christ. I am what God says I am. And I can do what God says I can do. I can do all things. All things means all things. All things means all things. I can do all things. Can you do all things? Yes, you can do all things. If you believe, if you only believe, if you have faith like a mustard seed, you say to this mountain of financial problems, this mountain of people problems, you say to this mountain of rejection, isolation, and woundedness, you can speak to that mountain and it will be removed because greater is he that's coming upon you. The spirit of God is coming upon you. The anointing is breaking every yoke of bondage. It's a new day. It's a day of rejoicing. It's a day of victory. I'm going to pray for you to enter into your day of your divine appointment, to enter into your day of your divine vindication, to enter into your day of resting in him. There is a rest for the people of God. No more struggling. No more fighting. No more anxiety. No more fear. No more discouragement. The joy of the Lord is your strength. It is time. You have suffered for too long. You've been wounded for so, for so long. You've been rejected for so long. You are sick and tired of being sick and tired. It's a new day. It's a new day. The anointing will come upon you. And he will lift you up. And you begin to walk in your kingdom anointing. In your kingdom authority. In your kingdom resources. Too blessed to be stressed. You begin to enter in to the fullness of your identity. Your kingdom resources. Your kingdom glory. You begin to experience that because you are what God says you are a king. And it is the father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. He chose you for such a time as this. He brought you in the kingdom for such a time as this. Because this is your time for your vindication. Now is the time. In a moment, I'm going to pray for you. I want you to know that yesterday's problems are gone. Yesterday's failures are gone. The accusations, the put downs, all that is gone. You have been labeled. You've been abused and misused, misunderstood, rejected. But I'm telling you right now, you're going to receive the spirit of God and you're going to have favor with all men. He's going to make you the head and not the tail. He's going to give you wisdom. He's going to open doors that no man can shut because God's on your side. You're a king. You will live like a king. You will talk like a king. You will act like a king because it is the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Are you willing to receive the kingdom? Are you willing to walk in your kingdom destiny? And stop thinking small and living small and begin to live as a king's kid and act as a king's kid and begin to see yourself as God sees you. He sees you in Christ, victorious and triumphant, complete in him, forgiven, washed in the blood, filled with power, filled with joy. A king after the order of Melchizedek. If you're ready, say, I, I have not lived like that. I have not thought like that. I have not acted like that. But I want to fulfill my kingdom destiny. I want to live like a king. I'm ready. What should I do? Confess all the doubt, the unbelief, the anxiety, the woundedness, the hurts, the disappointments, the things that have held you back. Because those were lies from the pit of hell. The devil is a liar. He has held you back now that you have heard the truth. And the truth is setting you free. Free to be what God created to be, created you to be. It's the proclamation of emancipation. There were slaves that did not hear the proclamation of emancipation when it was made. They continue to live in bondage. You're one of those slaves living in bondage to people pleasing, to fear, to woundedness, to poverty, to lack. But I say to you, the proclamation of emancipation has already been made. 
You're a free person, free to walk with God, free to receive all that God has paid for on Calvary, free to be what God has chosen you to be, an overcomer, a king, and a priest of the order of Melchizedek. It is your choice. The proclamation has come to you. Your time for freedom has come. Your time of abundance has come. Your time of vindication has come. Your time of healing has come. Your time has now come because your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. You can live in victory. You can be victorious, healed from every sickness and disease because your body has been purchased with the blood of Jesus. Your body is not a temple of sickness and disease. It's a temple of the Holy Spirit. If the spirit of him that raised up Christ from the dead dwell, dwells in you, he will quicken your mortal body. The time has come for your body to be quickened by the spirit of God. That you may walk in your health, in divine health, in divine prosperity, divine vindication. Because the time has come. You dare to take God at his word. If you dare to take God at his word, I want you to confess all your guilt and shame and condemnation, lack of faith, accepting Every lie from the pit of hell, making yourself a victim when you were chosen to be a victor in Christ. And the victory had already been won for you. And you chose to believe that you're a victim. You think like a victim. You talk like a victim. You live like a victim. It's time you break away from your, that victim mentality because you are your king after the, after the order of Melchizedek. You say, yes, men of God. I'm ready to be what God's called me to be. I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. My brother, I welcome you. My sister, I welcome you to the victory that's yours in Christ Jesus. That old devil is scared of you right now. That old devil is about to, to flee from you. And things are going to change. A change is coming. Oh, a change is here. You're going to see the changes take place right now because God's on a move and you're on a move with God. And you're realizing that you are not your own. You belong to God and God it's paid for everything. Everything's paid for, paid in full. You are a receiver, not an achiever. You go ahead and receive your, the anointing for your kingdom. Go ahead and, and, and step into the throne of grace and live there and walk there because that's where you belong. You say, yes, 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 Lord, yes, Lord, I'm ready. Confess now your sins of doubt and unbelief and living small and living in bondage. It's time for you to say, yes, I forgive. Forgive me, Lord. I did not live to the fullest of your, of your calling. I did not live to, to the highest that you called me to. I've lived in, in, in the lowest of the lowest. I, I want to come up to the throne. I want to sit with you, rule with you. I want to be everything you have created me to be. Here I am, my father. That's your prayer. Confess all that has held you back. The people you've been angry at, beaten, and unforgiving. It's time you confess all that. You don't need that. God's forgiven you. You forgive them. It's time to move on. It's time to move on with God. The move is on. I invite you to, to move on. Confess everything right now. And I'm going to pray for you that God may come and anoint you with a fresh oil. The oil of gladness. The oil of joy. That you may enter in the joy of the Lord. And the joy of the Lord will be your strength. Gracious Father, thank you for my brothers and sisters all over the world that are saying, Lord Jesus, I've been in bondage. Oh, I've been held back. Uh, I have not come to the fullness of my calling. I've not accepted the greatness that you've given me. I've, I've lived as a victim, but today I rise up to my calling as a victor in Christ. Not a victim, but a victor in Christ. I want to walk in the joy and the peace and the love of my Father. I want to fulfill what God has called me to do. And I'm saying, God, from this day forth, let me walk in your abundance. Let me walk in the fullness of the kingdom. Father, there is nothing impossible with you. Let me walk in that dimension of the supernatural. Let me walk in the supernatural provision. Let me walk in the supernatural guidance. Let me walk in the way that you prepared for me from the foundation of the world to be a king and a priest after the order of Melchizedek. Here I am, my father. Thank you, my father. Thank you for those, my father, that have prayed this prayer. They are saying, Lord Jesus, let it be so. Let it be so right now. Let it be so right now in every one of them. Let it be so, my father. Let it be so right now. Let them throw away the shackles of yesterday. Let them throw away the foolishness of yesterday, the bondages of yesterday, the failures of yesterday. Father, I thank you for each one of them. I release them to their glorious liberty, the liberty of the sons of God, to walk in that liberty, to abide in that liberty, to accomplish great and mighty things in this hour. 
and not to be caught up in the fears of the Antichrist and the new coming pandemics and all the things the church has, has not been able to liberate the people of God to this glorious liberty. Thank you, Lord, that you are liberating them. You are setting them free to know that you are the Lord and there is none other. Your name is above every name. You are the King of kings. To you be the praise. To you be the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, if you are saying, you know, I've never received Jesus Christ as my personal Savior. I've never known him. He is, he is not Lord of my life. I go to church, but I don't remember a day and a moment, a moment in time when I gave my heart to Jesus. I want to be born again. I want to be born in the kingdom of God. I want to be born into the royal family of his majesty. Born in the order of Melchizedek. The order of Jesus, the king of kings and the, and the Lord of lords. I'm ready. I want to accept Jesus as my savior. From this day forth, I want to walk with Jesus. I want to be a child of God. I want my name written in the book of life. Can you help me? Yes. Pray this prayer with me. Heavenly Father, I thank you for sending Jesus to die for me. I ask you, Jesus, to come into my heart. Be my Lord and Savior. Oh God, write my name in the book of life today. Give unto me the power the right to become your son from this day forth. Thank you for writing my name in the book of life and for coming into my heart. Father God, from this day, I pray that your will be done in my life. Thank you. Thank you for writing my name in that book of life. I'm looking forward to seeing you and spending an eternity with you. I give you all the praise. I give you all the glory. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Please, I want you to, to send me a message. I want to hear from you. God's on the move and all things that you've been waiting for are going to happen. Miracles are going to happen. It's going to be an exciting life. We're going to continue this series on how to overcome the Antichrist the great tribulation in these last days. May God bless you.